Hi folks, it's me Michaela and welcome or welcome back to my channel. We have my May reading wrap up happening today. So let's get into it, shall we? I forgot my iPad. Hold on. How am I supposed to do this without my iPad? So I actually made another spreadsheet for reading wrap ups. I used to just like take notes of my stats, but then I realized that I, I could be making a spreadsheet that has tables and charts so um that's what i've been doing now let's just talk about about may shall we so in the month of may i read five books all of them were physical reads that i owned four of them were new to me and one was a reread i read a total of 2463 pages in may which gives an average book length of 493 so some Pretty long books um specifically one really long book and that averages to about 79 pages a day for the month of may and i had an average star rating of 4.4 yeah i also uh started tracking my genres this month i read three romances one fantasy book and one general fiction slash literary pretty good that's a 60 20 20 split with romance being the biggest. If I can figure out how to like in how to put my little charts on the screen, I'll do that so you can see my little charts. But otherwise, let's just uh, put the iPad and the stats away and talk about the books, shall we? The first book that I read in May was Inheritance by Christopher Paolini. I was putting this off for a very long time because. It's 850 pages long. I like to read at work. I like to bring my book to work for me when I'm reading. And I was like, I cannot possibly be dragging this back and forth to work um, all the time. So I actually read this in my reading for 24 hours reading vlog because I thought, hey, look, I'm going to be reading for 24 hours. This is the book to be reading because I'll get it done faster if I'm trying to read for all of that time, you know? So that's what I did. I ended up reading it partially on Libby when I was at work, but the majority of it I did read physically from the book itself. And I gave this a three star. It was just like, it was fine. I liked it. It finishes off the series and I thought it did an okay job of doing that. I th And like the climax was good. It's just like this book and this series in general, Christopher Paolini, from what I've read, I've only read his Inheritance Cycle. I don't know what other books he's written, so honestly, other than this series, I cannot comment. But it's like too descriptive. It is too in detail to the point where things are being quite repetitive, where things are being described too much, it's taking up too much space and it's causing the plot to slow down to this like standstill kind of pace sometimes. And it just like isn't moving enough because you're reading about something that you don't really need to be reading about. And it really takes away from the actual story of the book, which I think is pretty solid for like a YA dragon fantasy world. For high fantasy, it's like pretty good. I find like the fight war scenes are again like just too over described you're like following someone through every single part of a battle and it's just not necessary <laughs> it's really not and i think this book would have been better if it was more like 500 pages instead of 850 pages personal opinion so you know i liked it but i didn't love it i then read in my new release reading vlog, which was Funny Story by Emily Henry. This was my first Emily Henry book and I absolutely adored it. Five stars, five stars, amazing, fantastic. If you wanna know more of like my detail thoughts, you know, I'll link the vlog for you. In general, this is like my kind of humor. I absolutely adored it. I am going to be reading more Emily Henry. I have Beach Read on my shelf right now. I'm planning to read it this summer. I received it for like Christmas actually. And I've just been waiting for the weather to feel appropriate to read Beach Read, right? Cause I'm like, well, I'm not gonna like read Beach Read in February. I'm in Canada, that's not happening. But I thought this was so good. I really loved the scenario of this, like the plot of this book is quite good. There's also a very strong female friendship and like adult friendship kind of storyline in here that I also really loved that it was like part of it. It wasn't just the romance, but like the dynamic between Daphne and Miles is quite great and also quite funny. They're like very like opposites in ways but complement each other. And then the whole like premise of this book is that Daphne's fiance leaves her 
to go run off with Miles's girlfriend. So now Daphne and Miles are like living together in Miles's apartment and they're both like heartbroken. And that's kind of where things start from. And I feel like just knowing that you can kind of tell the kind of humor that you're getting into with this book. And it was great. I loved every second of it. I'm also just like a sucker for a good cover. So fantastic, amazing, we loved. So I then read another new romance release, and that was This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune, which I also gave five stars. Honestly, that reading vlog was um, a highlight of the month because I was just reading things and loving it. So this is also new release. I had read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune before, and I did like that, but I didn't like love it. It didn't give me five star feels, but this did. I absolutely loved, adored this amazing it's set on PEI and like the absolute desire I have now to go back to PEI after reading this book is immense I'm like I need to go to PEI right now because I need to experience PEI again I miss it because of this book it's making me miss it the beaches the red sand Anna Green Gables tiny island things I don't know anyway I want to go to PEI because of this book. I mean, I've been to PI before. I live in Canada, but like, I want to go back to PI and I, because I haven't been in like a decade. This is like such an unnecessary tangent, but I really like this book. It was definitely like the steamiest of the Carly Fortune book. I've only read two. She has three books, but she says this is her kind of steamiest book, and I agree it is, but it's fun. It's great. Basically, um, you're following Lucy. Lucy goes to PI for a girl's trip with her best friend Bridget, and Bridget is a day late because she has a job interview so Lucy shows up to P.I. by herself she sleeps with a guy then finds out that that guy is her best friend's brother and then she like goes back to P.I. generally like every year from then on and you know things occur relationships develop between Lucy and Felix and it's really great it's also quite like learning of yourself there's also another amazing female friendship story in this that i adored as well as a like finding yourself and there's, there's, there's sense of like trying to escape your own life instead of just changing it anyway it's a great book very good i would say both like this summer will be different and funny story are both more on the like literary side of romance they're both just like a, have a bit more to them than just the romance and the way they're written feels a bit more literary than just your fun rompy time kind of romance which i also love just like i feel like these are good like more introductory to romance you haven't read a lot of romance but you want to try it out kind of books I feel like these are better options to start off than some other more spicy romances so i then read another romance which was Powerless by Elsie Silver. This is the third book in her Chestnut Springs series. It's also quite a chonky book, but I feel like well-deserved. I gave this one four stars. I didn't love, love it. There were some things in it that went just like a tad too far for me. There's just some things that I was like, eh, not for me, but I can see why other people might really like that. But I like both of these characters. It is like a bit heavier of a plot. There's some more like dramatic, traumatic things happening or like speaking more of traumatic histories and things. So it's like a bit of a heavier storyline. So I found that like weighed on me a little bit. And what I love the most about this actually is that it's like a road trip. So they road trip over to Gold Rush Rant. That is another Elsie Silver romance series that came out before Chestnut Springs. And you kind of like get introduced to like there's cameos basically from like all of those characters in the other series that are like now kind of in this series so it made me want to stop reading chestnut springs and go read gold rush ranch before finishing chestnut springs and i actually bought the first book because they got new covers so watch me read this in june because i know myself and i have no self-control Huge fan of Elsie Silver. Love a little cowboy yeehaw romance, right? This one's actually not as cowboy because the cowboy is an NHL hockey player. So it's like a sports romance where the hockey player is also a cowboy. Crossover. Yeah, it was like, it was good. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Not like my favorite book in the series, but I think this series overall is so good. And I really love Elsie Silver's writing. Then the last book was five stars, but I knew it was going to be five stars because I've read it before. And that's Beartown by Frederick Bachman. So I now own it. 
people. Finally got it from my sister. She finished reading it, so now it is mine. Because it originally was my mom's, but now my mom is like a Kindle reader only. So she didn't want the physical book anymore. But I reread this because I wanted to annotate. This is the first time I've ever annotated a book. I got like clear sticky notes and then a Sharpie so that I could highlight things without actually having to mark in the book because that was my reservation. And I feel like this works quite well. And I was a fan. So I did originally read this back, I think it was my first book I read in 2023. First book of the year, it was in a reading vlog I did specifically reading Frederick Bachman, where I discovered that I'm absolutely obsessed with this author. Given the fact that I'm absolutely obsessed with Frederick Bachman, it's like almost a crime that I've only read two of his books, but I reread Bear Town. I have plans to reread A Man Called Uva. I have it on my shelf now because I again bought that because I loved it. Also plan on annotating that one. And now that I've reread Bear Town, I will continue on in this series once I finally get the second book from my sister and I can annotate that one and then I'll buy The Winners which is the third book in the Bear Town series. I also really want to read Anxious People because that sounds like such a good book. The failed bank robber showing up at an open house and taking all these random people at the open house hostage. It sounds like a really good book. So absolutely love this. Just an amazing book. His writing is so good. It, there's parts where it's really funny. There's parts where it's so poignant. And like he handles these like really heavy topics so well. I will say if you're going to be reading Frederick Bachman books, at least the ones I've read, both A Man Called Uva and Bear Town, Bear Town especially, like read trigger warnings and be prepared to go into this book because it can be very heavy topics that are dealt with in a very real way. I wouldn't say there's anything in here that's like super explicit that you need to worry about, but things are discussed and the complexity of things are discussed. This series follows Bear Town and you're really following like everybody in Bear Town. It's a small community and you're bouncing between like dozens of points of views and because of that you're dealing with a lot of heavy topics because of all of the different experiences that people have in their lives and you know all of their interactions and their developments and it's just it's just so good it's amazing loved it and I want to read more of Frederick Bachman immediately. So that's uh, that, that's the books I read in May. I feel like it's quite um, an interesting variety. It's like a little romance sandwich between things that are very different from romance. There we go, that's, that's everything I read in May. So if you happen to like this video, make sure to give it a like. If you happen to like me, consider subscribing. I'd be happy to have you. If you've read any of these books, let me know. Also let me know what your favorite book you read in May was. And with that, I hope you're having a wonderful day today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.